Well, we're going to get started a little bit late, but hopefully I got a lot of content. Oh, this is a little, it's pretty loud. I've got a lot of content to get through, so some of it's going to go a little bit fast. Uh, but we've got, we've got a break after this, so I should be able to be available for some question and answer. Uh, my name is Brian Pete. I am a Joomla site builder. Haven't always been a site builder. I used to do Macintosh consulting. Owned my own company for about 11 years, and then got into site design on the side. And then took a little side trip to Pennsylvania. From I lived in Ohio. Went to Pennsylvania, USA, and uh, went to a ministry school. And then got a job at the ministry doing Joomla sites full-time for about three and a half years. And then uh, moved my family to Nashville, Tennessee, where they do country music. And started my own uh, company called Pete Creative. And so that's all I do is freelance freelance web, and I dabble in video. I've actually been back. Most people haven't seen me much because I've been back doing the cameras in the main session. Um, but I, I use mostly off-the-shelf commercial templates, and I use them to their full capacity, customize them depending on the, the budget of the job. Um, but some of my stuff is in the 1500 to 2500 range, so they don't have a lot of budget to get a fully customized site. They get something that feels fully customized, feels like a unified piece instead of just a bunch of pieces of software thrown together. Um, and so hopefully today we're going to look at how I do some of that. So I'm all about using the built-in theme tools. Uh, a, a little side story, I used to sell Apple Keynote templates and I, I had a friend buy one of my templates. And a few days later, she sent me the file back, and it looked terrible. And she said, what can I do? It looks terrible. She had changed every preset, changed the font, changed the colors, overridden everything. It was just a mess. I took it and put it all back to match the original template and sent it back to her. And she thought I had done magic, when all I did was let the template do the work. So uh, there's just a few things to look for in a, a, a template if you're buying a commercial template. Does it allow for alternate layouts and designs? Meaning, can you modify some of the settings in the template and assign them to a different page? Um, some templates do this right in the theme. Some templates, you have to use the Joomla function and dupe the template um, and then change the settings and assign it there. But I, I, I kind of live in the, the U-theme world, and they do it all inside the theme. So I can make all kinds of setting changes and then apply those settings only to specific pages. Um, does it have preset styles? I usually. I love it when they come with five or six styles. I pick one that's the closest to what my end result's going to be. Start there, duplicate that style, and then mess, you know, mess with all the settings. Does it offer, I call it device size switches. Some templates rely on, I'll cover this a little bit later, but some templates rely on bootstrap, bootstrap responsive classes. So anytime you want to hide something, you have to apply a class to it, whether it be in the, the module suffix, or in your content itself, you have to add a div or a span and put a class on it. Utheme, in their template admin, has a whole list of component of modules. Uh, it's not all the module positions, but they've sort of taken over a bunch of the module positions. And they just give you little switches, which I'll show you in a second here, to turn off and on, depending on what the device size is. Um, can you customize the position grid? Utheme's warp UI kit templates are a little less flexible in this manner, but if you've ever used Gantry, or I haven't used Gantry 5 a whole lot, but if you've ever used Gantry 4, it's got all those sliders. You can totally customize the grid and put however many positions. Um, T3, similar thing. They've got all these different things, and you can decide how many you want in the row. And then what kind of menu options? Thankfully, these days, you don't have to, usually you don't have to go looking for a mega menu plugin. It's already built into the template. How, it, how it's done is a little different, and I'll, I'll go into it two or three different um, example template frameworks, and, and we can look at that. So module positions. Most templates come with one of these little maps. I, I Usually when I'm working, I actually have my site open, the admin tab, and the next tab. And in the next tab, I actually have the original demo or a local demo of the site. Because as I start ripping things out of my install, I don't necessarily have access to all of the original demo install that I used. So I'll just flip over to that tab and glance and, and uh, double check the, the names of my positions and things. Module Chrome. Sometimes this stuff is hard to find, but usually when I 
with Utheme, I'm used to it, but if I switch to a different theme maker, I'll hunt around on their site, hunt around in the demo, and find all of the module options. Um, with Utheme, it's a little easier because, like I said, in their admin, um, you can see all of the modules listed there. You can actually choose from a pop-up, primary color, secondary color, muted color, plain. You can change padding. You can add a class. You can add an icon. You, you know. um, so it's really handy. You don't have to go futzing around, find this manual on their site that lists all of these classes, and then go to the module and put them in the class. Um, so this is an example of Utheme, how they do the, the module um, responsive switches off and on. You just click the little icons, takes care of it. Yeah, this is warp 7. Um, and one of the things I do that's kind of handy is, uh, for example, on my new site, I wanted a Twitter box on the front page. But it seemed like it, it was just extra height when you shrink it down on a phone. So I actually have two copies of the Twitter module loading. One of them shows up on the desktop on the home page. The other one, as you get it, as you shrink it, it drops off and it's actually in the off canvas slider. So if you're on a phone and you tap the menu, you can see my latest tweet in the sidebar on the phone. So that's kind of uh, just a neat way to add some extra styling and not clutter up your site with too much content on the, uh, in a mobile uh, situation. So I don't know if you've, if, what level everybody is here, but um, when you're not in something like Utheme, most of the templates use Bootstrap, so they're going to use these responsive classes. And these don't just work in a module. You can use them anywhere in your content. So you can create a page using, a, uh, I'll show you in a second, I'll, get in, I'll, I'll pull up a website and show you some of the, tr some of the goodies that, you, that UIKit uses and then Bootstrap. Um, but you can lay out stuff in an article and throw a class or a span around something and give it one of these classes and it will disappear on a phone or only show up on a phone. Um, so it's really, it's really handy to have these saved and, uh, in your toolkit because you can really get creative with the structure inside of an article and not have to, um, you know, get cre you don't have to try to add a module or do some weird embeds or do weird things. You can just use these classes. Um, actually, that was the UI kit classes. They put this little UK. Uh, in front of it. This is the bootstrap classes and you might want to, this one's for Gantry, there's a little URL there if you if you use Gantry. That page is really hard to find but thankfully it happens to actually match the bootstrap, the official bootstrap classes so if you're using a bootstrap theme um, you should be able to find those same classes. In Gantry, uh, Gantry 5 they changed a lot of things. I kind of got my slides a little out of order but they changed a lot of things and they've got these particles and blocks, and I don't use Gantry 5 a whole lot. I've just kind of toyed around with it a little bit. Um, but the way they built it in the back end is you're building the blocks in Gantry. You can add these classes um, into the block and hide the entire block. Uh, T3 does the same thing here. Uh, they don't use the class, but they use a little icon. And I don't know if the mouse, no, it does, okay. So you can see large, medium, small, extra small. So this is in the T3 back end. So you go into the responsive tab, you click one of these options, and then you can shut off an entire position, not just one module, but any module in that position across the whole site will hide depending on what you've set in these different sizes. All right, so I'm going to go, uh, oh no, it's in this one. I'm going to go into a warp theme that I've got here. Sorry, I'm just running this in MAMP, so. Hopefully nothing goes wrong. Here we go. I'm just going to bounce around in here quick because I've got a lot of stuff to cover. But come on. All right, so this is what a warp template will look like. Warp is built with uh, UI Kit, which is a different framework from Bootstrap. Uh, it's a, basically a competitor. They've got a customizer, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but these other tabs, this is where I was talking about, can you do alternate layouts? I can make any number of layout presets. Um, this style is pulled from the, from the customizer, so I'll show you that in a second. But I can, create, I can create sets of styles. Then I can create these layouts 
and assign a style to the layout. Let me switch off of the default. So this is the front page. It's using my sample style. I can turn off the content, do some stuff with the navigation, change the sidebars, mess with the grid. This, this, these are just uh, options for you know, stacking or parallel. First doubled gives you the first two side by side, then it stacks them, so that kind of thing. You can decide if you want it stacked on phones, stacked on tablets. And then they've got some other options, full height. Um, I'm just going to skim through these. But down here you can see, so I can assign this to the home page. So only the home page gets all of these settings. Modules, this is what I was talking about. U-theme. The only gotcha with the U-theme templates is if you try to use a class in a module that's one of these positions listed back here, it won't get, the template will just ignore it. So for any of these positions that are listed back here, you have to put the class, the module class or the module suffix in this field. It, will, it just ignores it. The messy thing is, for, field, for modules not listed in here, you have to put it in the module. <laughs> so yeah, that was a catch. But it is really handy, especially for users that don't want to screw around with too much stuff and, and learn all the suffixes. You've got all of these options, including icons, turn on a badge. Uh, there's your mobile switches. So it is pretty handy. They, you, can, you, know, you can see they've got some pre-made classes, some padding and stuff. Um, then they've done their mega menu in the back end as, as, as opposed to using a special module. It's just built into the template, so you can add columns, do column widths and stuff. Um, let me go back here and show you this, though. This is pretty crazy. I have a love-hate with this because it can get really overwhelming. There's, if, you're, if you're not comfortable with CSS, a template that has this sort of a setup, which I think T3 also does, has something similar to this, um, it's just setting after setting after setting. The really neat thing is if you set your, where are they? Primary color, success color, muted color. I thought there's a secondary color. Well, a secondary background. If you set these colors in here, you make a copy of it, give it its own name, set these colors, it's going to save some files into the template in a style folder. And anytime you call primary color. So you go to one of your modules and you decide I want a primary background on the module, it pulls from this. So you don't have to mess with any custom CSS up to that point unless you just want to. There are times when I can't find a setting in here and I just give up and, and customize it. Um, so let me hit cancel on this. Let me show you. Well, come on. I had meant to log into these beforehand, but I closed my laptop earlier. So this is purity. This is a T3 template. Well, as you can see, with the U-theme template, you only end up with one entry here, and you do all the extra settings inside the template. Purity plays a little more nicely with the, the stock Joomla install, where it's actually giving you instances of the template. But I'm going to go into the default here. Uh, Oh, I hit Pro Star, didn't I? There it is. Um, I'm going to skim through a lot of this, but the basic gist is dig into the theme, look through all the settings, put, install a demo in MAMP, start messing with it, and learn what all the settings are, because you may discover, oh, wow, I've been hacking CSS or doing some weird thing to get around this, and it's built into the template, and I didn't even realize it. So again, like this has these very customizable. The, the interesting thing about T3, and I think Gantry 5 does this to some respect, they build their little template grid, but you can assign, uh, let's see, I thought it was in here. Yeah, you can actually assign your own module positions to their grid. It's like a position in a position. <laughs> and because of the way that I showed you the screenshot of the, uh, the way they do responsive, then you can shut off that entire block instead of shutting off one module at a time. You can shut off the entire block of modules. But this gives you functionality. Of just, it, it just lets you go crazy with all kinds of different things and um, completely customize your layout. Uh, I don't know what else. Yeah, so this, they've got a mega menu in here, including the functionality to, like, if you turn on submenu, you can actually add a, I'm kind of whipping through. I haven't, you can tell this is kind of a stock install. You can add a module to the menu right in the 
template admin instead of trying to find a weird hack using modules anywhere or something and trying to hack it in the menu. Um, it's all built into to the T3 system. And then they've also got what they call theme magic, similar to that settings thing in uh, the customizer in, um, oop, I just went full screen, that was kind of cool, in the U-theme template. All right, that's just a, a quick view of that. And then I've got Gantry here. It's yet another, I don't know why it keeps doing that. Probably because I closed the laptop earlier. So this is Gantry 5. You can see they've got their presets. And then instead of it hiding it in another panel, they just put all the selection items all over the place here. Header styles, canvas styles. Um, so if you spend time looking at all these settings and testing them out, you can get pretty far without having to get into hacking the CSS or using app media stuff, things like that. In fact, this one lets you do the breakpoints. You can see they're already getting into the REMS, which was mentioned yesterday. As, huh? Yeah, so, and I haven't messed, I haven't started. I'm do, still doing pixels in my stuff, so that's something I need to, there's always something new. I learn something literally every single day. <laughs> All right. Um, let me go, uh, so let me go back here. All right. So this is something interesting that I see. There are frameworks and then there are frameworks. A lot of the template companies call the system that they build their template designs on a framework. Warp 7, Gantry, T3, Helix. Um, some of these I had never heard of. I kind of Googled around today. The, the YJ Simple Grid looks kind of interesting. But we also call, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call them code frameworks. Bootstrap. UI kit, sometimes people just use a custom one. 99% of the templates you're going to see are bootstrap. Um, the only two sites, except for like buying something on Theme Forest, the only two companies I know that use UI kit are UTheme and Optimum Theme. And, and once you're used to a warp slash UI kit system, they're all, they're all kind of the same. Um, the reason I really love, uh, I just, I, I love the UI kit. It has a whole bunch of extra nifty tools and functions that Bootstrap doesn't necessarily have. So you end up having to go find a JavaScript to do some weird little thing that, that Bootstrap, like, well, I'll get into the column, ma matching column heights is built into UIKit. Um, that's just one, one example. So let me, so this is the UIKit website. Um, get UIKit, yeah, I had it on. Ah, Keynote doesn't, uh, you can't swipe back to Keynote. Yeah, there's the two websites. If you're interested in looking at UIKit, get UIKit.com. Um, they've got, you know, just like Bootstrap, they've got grids. And I'm going to cover, whoa, did I just lose my, there it goes. I'm going to cover UIKit a little more because I, I just live in it every day and it's, I'm so used to it. Um, it's kind of frustrating too because everybody else lives in Bootstrap. And um, so when I moved to Bootstrap, like I said, I always get kind of stuck on stuff. But so they've got the fluid grid where you just drop a, and this is the kind of thing, I'll show you an example on my own website. Inside an article, if you know these tools and you've looked at the site and you dig through and you, I, I literally steal code right off of there. In fact, sometimes they don't show the markup that I want and I'll, I'll just inspect the element and literally steal it, you know, steal the whole group and paste it into my article. So it's really handy, but they've got these, the grid itself, and then each of the boxes inside the grid, and it's even, uh, you can even do these medium, large, small. So you can set, let's see if they show it to you. Well, yeah, like this. With large, well, that's visible large. You can do width large, one five, or one, well, let's see, yeah. 1.5 would be 1 fifth. Which large, width large 1.5, width medium, you know, 1 half, width small 1.1, one, one, and it will give you 5, 2, 1 as you collapse the, um, the thing down. Let me see if the bottom, there's something really cool. This, I, when I stumbled on this, I love this. It lets you just take a list. Let's say you have a, a giant list of names, and you want it to go multi-column, and you want it responsive multi-column. 
you can use this UK grid and then set your widths and slap your list in there and it will render your list out with matching column heights and as you shrink it, it drops to, you know, it's like four columns, drops to three, drops to two, and it keeps the heights level, and then it drops down to one if you need it to. Um, I've used that so many times, because the old way I used to do it was just hacking in, hacking in columns and setting my own length, you know, putting the content in each of the boxes. And it's such a pain, because it doesn't always line up, and this thing just, it just does it for you. Uh, there's all kinds of little things in here. Um, panels. You know, the U UI kit, I don't know why. Well, it's live internet, that's why it's slow. They have these panels, and you can, in, in a UI kit template, if you set UK, uh, class UK panel, space class UK panel primary, it'll give you the primary color from the template, pulling it in from that customizer automatically. Um, and it, they've got buttons, you know. Looks, it's, this is similar to Bootstrap. But they've got all these little modifiers, mini, small, large. You can set the colors, primary. There's even some JavaScript stuff there. Um, icons, it uses Font, Font Awesome. Most of them do. Badges, I was looking to see if there's anything. I sometimes use the, the modals instead of installing. I've gotten used to how to use the tools in this, and it's already in my template. So instead of going over and installing another pop-up system, or another slider, or like no number tabs, no number sliders. I'll try to use what's in here. Um, the only time I, if a client is going to be creating sliders and tabs and things, then I'll tend to use the no number stuff because it just takes a little quick short code. And it's a whole lot easier for them to, to do it themselves. Uh, but if it's me laying it out for myself, um, I just try to use this so that there's not extra scripts that have to be installed on the site. There's smooth scrolls. I mean, they've got all kinds of stuff. Um, They've added some new dynamic grid. There's Lightbox. Um, I think I've got. Yeah, so Bootstrap. Same thing. If your boot, if your, if your template is a Bootstrap template, sometimes the template demo or documentation will have some stuff in it. But like with Gantry, I used to look at the like Gantry four templates, and they'd show you a few things, but they didn't really they downplayed the fact that Bootstrap is built into their template. But if you knew that, you can go over here to the Bootstrap site, look at the grid system, or look at tables. You want a stripe table? All it takes is knowing this class table, table striped, and you've got a stripe table. So you know, forms, buttons, I mean, everybody's seen, everybody's pretty much seen the Bootstrap buttons. Um, but it's, it's worth spending time learning all of the tools that are built into the to the template and utilizing them. All right, let's see. Font Awesome, really handy thing. I know one of the sessions yesterday was talking about when to use Font Awesome and when to, to go with an SVG. I'm, I'm just starting to mess around with SVG with PNG fallback. I really, but I do use Font Awesome all the time. Most of the time it's for social icons and then like those little arrows after a link. Um, UI kit does it a little different. They, they kind of roll their own, so it has this little UK in it. But for most, 99% of the templates you're going to see, if they have Bootstrap, they've probably also got Font Awesome built into them. Um, one neat little trick I use if I, if I want clients to be able to drop icons is I'll use no number snippets, and I'll put this code into the snippet. And this, whoop, I guess I can't, yeah, I can't really select it. But this portion that's got the name of the icon, camera retro, I put a variable into the snippet. And then in the article, all you have to do is bracket, snippet, space, icon name, bracket, and you got an icon. And a client can usually handle that kind of thing because they don't even have to look at the code editor. It's all, it's all done through the snippet. Um, look and see what the included extensions are with your template. Some of them come with nothing. Some of them come with a lot. All the U, the U themes tend to come with the free version of Widget Kit. Well, no, I guess it's... You, yeah, they don't have a free side, so it comes with the pro version. If you bought the, bought into the Template Club, it comes with the pro version of Widget Kit. Um, arguably, it probably adds extra bloat and scripts and things to the site, but um, for the stuff I'm building for my clients, most of them are, are smaller. I, I'm, I haven't yet really dug into trying to strip things out and keep the site super lean. 
mostly because they don't have a lot of budget and I got to get the site up fast and it still needs to function and look great. Uh, and tools like Widget Kit, just they really make you look good. Rock Sprocket, same idea. I use Rocket Sprocket on all kinds of stuff. Um, it can load K2, Zoo, and then Rock Sprocket. Well, even both Widget Kit has it too, but Rock Sprocket will let you do just custom content. And if you, if you take time to read the documentation and learn how to customize it, you can actually do your own layouts for Rock Sprocket, which I've done for a few sites. It really, it really is handy. News Show Pro, I used it on one site that came with it in the template. Um, don't have a whole lot of time in it, but it, it looked massively flexible for putting. We have a front page, and it's got larger news articles and then smaller ones that are a different category next to it, so there's a lot of flexibility. Uh, the Joomla Shine templates all come with the free versions of all their templates, page builder, uniform, image show. All right. But all that to say, let the template do the work for you. Learn the framework. Learn all the goodies. Refer, you know, when I'm working on a, a Utheme site, I will have that Git UI site up in a tab. And I hit something, I'm like, you know, I need a one column, three, you know, something. I switch over there, go and find the, the grid code. Because I don't do it quite often enough to have it just off the top of my head. Pretty soon I probably will be. But um, I'll go over there. Just I'll just steal the code. Come back over in my article, paste the code in, um, and go from there. So how, how are we doing on time? I don't even know. OK. Huh. OK. So what happens when you run into issues? Biggest issue I see is menu items don't fit. Nine times out of 10, you've installed the demo, which I, I mean, like I, I love starting from the demo. They've got it perfectly tuned. Works all the way down to mobile, works all the way back. Um, Utheme is notoriously bad for, it's perfectly sized and it's got a search, an expandable search icon in the menu. So when you click on it, it scoots over and it's got a certain width to it. I start messing with the menu, putting my content in the menu, and immediately, now when I collapse it, I got overlap, which I'll show you in a second. Um, it's actually a pretty easy fix unless you really have a big menu. Um, but most of the time, it, it's a pretty easy fix with CSS. Another issue you might run into is content doesn't fit or doesn't match. Um, I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to hit that one. But, but most of the time, you can, over, you can overcome that with CSS overrides. Um, if you, whatever template you've got, learn immediately how to do a custom CSS file or a custom less file, however. Some of the guys even, um, I'm toying around with this, but in one of the early sessions when he was going through all the tools he uses on the Mac, he, one of them was mentioned was CodeKit. And it, it will let you write in less or SAS and compile out a custom CSS file. And then you can just upload that. If your template doesn't support, it just supports a CSS, you can do whatever language you want, have fun with it, spit out a CSS file, and then upload that into the server. Um, yeah. Logo the wrong size. This again usually can be fixed with um, CSS. And then size issues on mobile. I run into so many times I build a site, I get all this stuff in it, and then I check it at all the sizes. And inevitably, fonts are too big, they're not scaling right. Um, so I'll show you a couple of example um, at media calls you can use for that. So fixes. Use responsive classes or those device switches. Just shut things off on mobile. Um, use custom CSS, like I said. Uh, rethink. This is kind of important. I do this with a lot of my clients. They give me this giant thing. We want 12 things in the menu. And I work with them on, OK, let's rethink this. First I show them, OK, this is what your template is. You can see I, I could probably make it work You know, if you want six, seven. But it really isn't a good idea. And as an, from an end user perspective, you're giving them too many options. If you've ever gone to a restaurant where the menu is just massive, you almost don't know what to do. There's just in, the, in America, we have, we have a restaurant called Cracker Barrel. And it's country, southern, southern American food. And their menu is so busy and filled with stuff. It's the problem we used to have with portals back in the day, portal sites. There was so much stuff there that people couldn't find anything. So I really work my clients to whittling down what's in that menu for maybe five things and then get into the submenus. And in fact, sometimes I'll use spacers and, and some tricks with menu and sub items under the menu and try to really keep it clean. And again, use the goodies that are built into the framework. So let me show you this. 
Yeah, one of these screens. All right, here. You can see I, I added, so this was the demo up to pages. I added one menu item to this. I'm going to switch out a full screen see what it does. All right. Well, it went full screen. It's supposed to be able to, there it is. All right. So if I, if I shrink this some here. All right, so bam, you can see it. It's pretty bad up to that point. So let me pull this back over. So I'm going to control click or right click and inspect this element. And it took me right away to the list item and then the link inside of it. And you can see the green here. Well, it's not going to, I can't put my mouse on. You can see the green is showing that there's, I never remember if it's padding or margin, but I'll find it in a second here. So I can look in the sidebar and indeed it's padding and it's got 25. So this is just in my browser and it's going to affect, if I, let, if I did it without using an app media, it's going to affect everything. But I'll do an app media so that it only affects it at a certain breakpoint and it drops it. You'll see it drop. So now we can try 15. Still not quite right. I think I ended up with 12. And then I went down here and dropped the font one more size. So there. So it just fits. But now it's too small on the desktop. So I really, so this is this, I need this piece here. Now bar, you know, uh, greater than li, greater than l, or a. Then I need the padding and I need the font size. So let me see, I should have, yeah. So this is my custom CSS file for that site. And I already created some breakpoints. And while I was, while I was messing with this, I actually, sometimes I'll just do this. I go to body, I go to computed. And I look at the width here, and uh, I just picked, I thought, you know, 1,200 is nice and round. So at 1,200 is where I wanted it to change. So inside this app media, as soon as it hits anything below 1,200, it's going to give that menu 12 padding, 15 point. So if we go back here, I'll just do this for good measure. All right. Now it should. Yep, there it goes. So menu problem taken care of. That's it. I mean, once you know how to do that kind of thing, it's not too hard to search. Just inspect the element. Uh, there you go. All right, what have I got here? Oh, yeah, at media calls. So here's some examples of at media calls that I do. Oh, I forgot. To, <laughs> I didn't test this slide. It's doing one, one line at a time. So here I've got a max width of 374 pixels. So obviously this was something I was messing with on a, a small phone. And it, for whatever reason I picked 374. I don't know what my reasoning, but it must have been. I tend to, I mean, it's a little bit better, I guess, because if, if there's a weird sized device, if you grab, I, it bugs me. If I'm a perfectionist. So it bugs me if I'm testing a site and I literally grab the site and there's some point in time where I can break it. Even if it's not a standard device size, somebody's going to look at my site and go, did you know it's broken? So I tend to just make sure it collapses all the way down, which was actually good practice from the responsive workshop. So here I've, uh, this is a, a U theme, and it just happens to be one of the U theme classes. So I've told it, you know, 320, line height, 32. Let's see. Oh, here's another one. Oh, gosh. Sorry. There's a couple more. So at 320, I actually overrode the template setting for the body size. And I think the body on this site, I made it really big. So um, I dropped it a little bit on the phone because my override making it really big hit the whole site at every size, and it was too big on the phone. So adjusted that. The same with here. I have a blog that uses some H2s um, in the titles. And uh, I wanted a specific line height. And they're, they're all caps. That's why the line height time. OK. This is one more example. Gosh. So when you're looking at those, the grid systems that Bootstrap or UIKit have, they're great, but sometimes you just want to override the settings. So again, at between 568 and 767, I told it this box on my home page is normally one. You can see it looks like I wouldn't need this because it's for 1.3. It's one third already. But the template 
overrides it. When you get down under 767, the template was dropping to 2, and I wanted it to stay at 3. So I just overrode it with this at media call on my homepage. And so all the way down to 568, it still stays three columns. And then it finally falls back to what the template had and drops the two columns. So, so here, let's um, see if I can find it here. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, I dropped out of full screen. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So this is my site. And this is, uh, this is an example. This is actually, I overrode the article. Um, but this is using the grid. Yeah, I'll try to make it quick here. I don't know why Safari does that. I'm probably one of the only five people that still uses Safari, but what? So you can see here, I actually, I wish I had more time. I, when I pitched this, I, I actually wanted one of those three-hour sessions because I was really going to dig into overrides. But I overrode the article output for my portfolio. So I'm not using a portfolio component. I'm using the articles in a specific category. Um, and in the, in the setup, you can see my 2535. But then on Medium, I did it the same. Yeah, Medium is 2535. Um, and I put a separator in there. Uh, where is that? Yeah, grid divider. So I'm utilizing. This was me overriding the article layout, putting, putting the, the framework that's already in the template. I added it into farther down in the article and broke the article up. And actually, what's going on on the left side, that's the article image. The rest of this, um, I wish I could, I'd, I'd love to do a whole session on. Uh, there's a plugin called Fields Attached that lets you use custom fields. And I added those custom field outputs to my override. So in the back end, I can add more article images and an extra block of text. Um, but you can see it, it all kind of matches the theme. I'll show you the blog. Let me come out, I'm going to come out of full screen too so I can shrink it. So this is the blog. I've used some overrides to make the image go full width. Um, this title here, you can see it change over time you know, as I shrink it. Same with the titles on the side. I think they get smaller. Yeah, they do. Well, and then they drop off completely. Well, and here's an example of the side is just fluff. So I don't really need it on mobile. It's just there to add a, <laughs> make the page not so wide. So I just shut it off on mobile. Don't really need it. Left the subscribe option, but the rest of it's uh, not that big a deal. And here's the three column. This is what I was talking about when you shrink it. I'm using a bunch of at media calls to keep these things intact as it shrinks. So every time I hit a part where the text wouldn't fit, I just added another at media call um, to make sure. And the only glitch is right here. You can see it kind of. Um, but here you can see it's staying the three columns till it finally drops after that break point. Um, and then I dropped the Twitter off too. So anyway, let me go back to Keynote. I think that's everything. Let's see. Yeah. So I know it's really kind of a quick overview. There's just so much stuff. I'm, if you want to write my website down, uh, I've just launched it, I, and I've got a blog on it finally. And I'm hoping to do a whole series of blogs on overrides. Probably the, some of it will be just because I live in the warp world. Some of it will be warp based. But I'm going to try to do them. I'm going to try to decipher all of the documentation that's kind of a mess and all over the place and actually go through all the different types of overrides that you can do and clearly explain them so they make sense. So, um, so I hope to do that. And then uh, I might do one on fields attach, although that won't be needed. What, 3.6 is getting the custom fields? Anyway, so hopefully that was informative. I hope it wasn't too general. Um, I don't know if we, are we on break or are we running through yeah, break? We're like five minutes. Okay. Well, if you want to talk to me, I probably have a few minutes out in the hall. Otherwise, good.